But our big half eight interview for you tonight, and we apologise for delaying that. That's down to the US president. He's with a personal trainer and body transformation expert who's built his company, Ram Fitness UK, for almost the last 10 years. He's been on SES Who Dares Wins, Tom Kerridge Lose Weight for Good, and most recently I got home from work to find that my wife and I were watching him work his magic on Channel 5's It's Your Fault I'm Fat. I want you to know that I'm on your side, OK? So we're going to be on this journey together. You're both ready to make the positive changes, yeah? Raymond has got a brutal six-week training regime up his sleeve. I want you to give it all you got, OK? Really push it. Let's go. Knees up, knees up, knees up. Brilliant. Keep going, girls. Knees up. Get the heart rate going. OK? Star jumps now. Let's go. Come on, mum. You got this. We're in this together. Come on. <laughs> Try your best. Try your best. That's all I want. Give it your best. High five. You've not stopped. You've not told me to F off. This is good. This is good, all right? Let's go again. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> A clip from It's Your Fault, I'm Fat. We welcome to the show Raymond Muzon. Hello, Ray. Hello, how are you? Um, it's great. I want to explain to people. So basically, I, I got in from work and my wife was watching that show with you in it. And um, so I started following you on Instagram and then you sent me a message saying, what do you think of the show? And I was like, listen, dude, you should come on. And so here you are on the radio. It's a real pleasure to have you on. Those shows, I would imagine, are really, really hard work. Um how do you go about selling what, what you do, what, what's intrinsic to you, to people who've never taken care of their health? To be honest with you, you can't really decide who you get that signs up. So you just got to work with what you got, you know, and you got to try your best of everyone um, and put maximum effort in with whatever they want to achieve. And you've got to go to their, you know, sing to their note a little bit, you know. Yeah. They're not going to follow the programme straight away. And, like, if you go beast mode on them and push them how you would push other clients they're not going to respond very well. So you've really got to adapt and tailor it to their specific needs. But obviously, you want them to get results as well and do well. So it is quite challenging doing what I do for a living. I thought what you achieved with with those two in that particular show was nothing short of a miracle, given that also lockdown <laughs> happened while you were filming. So what you thought was going to be a routine we got disrupted anyway, didn't it, by the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, we were filming the show and uh, we had multiple film dates done. We are actually were supposed to finish the show with me taking Lucy out on a date to dinner in a restaurant and, like, get her prepared for dating someone and meeting someone. And that obviously didn't happen. We went into a national lockdown. So I actually had to finish filming the show myself. And I was actually being directed over Zoom with a director, all these boom mics and all these cameras I had to set up. And I'd had nothing. I like, didn't know how to do any of that. I had to figure it out and some kind of film the show to finish it, you know, because we're three quarters of the way through and I've got to film the last bit on my own, kind of do a weigh-in online and, you know, it was it was madness. <laughs> yeah, that well, I mean, that looked difficult because she, um, the daughter didn't want to get on the scales, did she? I mean, she, you had to really persuade her onto the scales for the final weigh-in. Yeah, I think she knows she could have done better, Lucy. But again, you know, we all deal with things differently. We all have different circumstances um, when you're trying to lose weight and tone up. You know, and do a body translation. Obviously, when it's on national television, it's a bit daunting when you lose seven pounds in the first week. And then obviously six weeks goes on, you do the final way and then she's only lost five pounds. It's like, what's happened there, you know? But you can you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You know, you can try your best. You can give all the knowledge. You can be with the best PT in the world, the best nutritionist. If they don't want to do it, they won't do it. You know, and that's up to them. But people can always come back and, do well a second time and so there is no rush when you want to transform you know take your time with it give us a bit more of your background then have you always been into fitness or was there a trigger for you that got you into this career now no um i'll go back like kind of but i'll do i do like the mid-story version like quickly okay. childhood wasn't great for me um, my dad died in prison um he was found hanged in prison by bed oh, I'm so sorry Grow up uh, knowing that at school wasn't great for me. I had braces. Thank God I didn't have to wear the head brace to school. I had to wear that at night. But I still had braces. I used to hide in the bushes from the bullies. I was bullied on and off. And my mum used to wait for me. And I'd run out from the bushes and jump in the car. Um, so I didn't have a fatherly figure growing up. I was brought up by my mum and my two sisters. So it was all female orientated growing up. So obviously, you know, it wasn't great for me at school. I didn't get the best grades. My highest grade at school was a D in English. So I had no good grades at all. I was doing mechanics, football coaching, welding, panel beating. Then I was working in Tesco, stacking shelves, getting bossed around. 
And I just thought, looked up to God thinking, is this going to be my life? So I started training to build myself up, get my mental health in order, put muscle on, give myself more confidence. That was at a local gym. And then funny enough, a job come available there. So I applied for it, done a transformation on myself. And in nine months, I put 20 kilos of muscle on, which is a lot of muscle to put on in nine months, all from natural eating, training really hard. And then I had government funded personal training certification through working at the gym. And that's how I built myself up. Um, And then I was training people at the gym and then I started my business. That's amazing, Raymond. I had no idea about that, that part of your backstory. What What would you say now to to fifteen year old Raymond? Oh, if I I, well, I haven't visualised how my life has gone from what I knew then, but mm. it's just crazy, really. You know, um, I didn't think I was going to end up where I am today. From mm. where I was then, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen. But obviously, you know, I'm here. You know, and it wasn't easy because obviously when I was at the gym, I was started training clients there. And then I was trying to build my business up alongside while working full time. And then a bloke come in the gym one day because I had all these ideas. I had this business plan of how I wanted to expand and do my business, but didn't know how to put it to reality. So this guy's in the gym and he had curly hair, Goldilock curly hair. And yeah. uh, a guy that was older and wiser than me goes, do you know who that guy is? I said, I haven't got a clue. And they go, that's Tony Woodcock. Oh, the Arsenal player. Arsenal player, Tony Woodcock. So I've Googled him because I didn't know at the time. I'm only 18 years old. I've just wanted to start my business. I'm all hungry, wanting to get going. And I've Googled him and he's an ex-England Arsenal professional footballer, Nottingham Forest, you know, European Cup. And I thought this guy is going to be able to help me out. You know, so I approached him one day and I said, can I train you? Um, And Mr. Woodcock can have a testimony on my website. He kind of looked at me and was like, well, I don't know if you're any good. (laughs) surely not he gave me his email address met up with me took me under his wing and then I got enough clients where I was able to leave full-time job and then I went off for Ram Fitness 10 years I've been doing it I helped one guy lose eight stone in eight months and he actually ran off with another woman and left his life uh, wife (laughs) done a full-on transformation Um, I've done lots of transformations over 500 since I've had my business and Tony Woodcox had my back from day one since when I started and you mentioned the benefit to your own mental health when when you got fit, and I, I'm not sure if if, if that's um, emphasised enough sometimes because people talk about getting fit, they talk about losing weight, and they talk about a physical transformation. But explain some of the mental health positive side effects you get when you are working out. Well, I always say to all my clients that you know you shouldn't go off the scales, shouldn't go off measurements or weight, just go off the mirror. So relating that to mental, what you've just asked, mm. you know look good and, and you feel good then you know it's gonna it's gonna pay off dividends and every attribute mentally you know so I wouldn't so much worry about the numbers on the scales when you're trying to set out to lose weight tone up lose inches just go off the mirror and if you look at yourself in the mirror and you think I'm not happy with that and then you work on it bit by bit reach out to personal trainers nutritionists whatever you want and uh and then that's how you're going to get your goals but mentally I think yeah it's, it's just it's a massive part in a, achieving a body transformation because it makes you feel good. You feel better about yourself. You'll have a better day at work. And it's all about the law of attraction in your head. You know, you attract what you want in life. So if you want a body transformation, then you've got to do everything possible to make that happen. You know, but if you're making the wrong choices in life, drinking too much alcohol, eating too much bad food, you know, the philosophy of losing weight, there's so many different analogies and philosophies and theories and what you can do. But really, as long as you eat less and move more, that's how you're going to lose weight. And if you're eating too much and not moving enough, that's how you're going to gain weight. And it is literally as simple as that. And that's what I do in my business. I keep it simple. And then going on to nutrition then, because you mentioned that a couple of times, how difficult is it to eat nutritionally well? And is it more expensive? Because it seems, it strikes me as someone who's trying to move away from bad food. It's really cheap to eat bad food. It is. Um, I have a mindful eating plan that I give out to clients. I can actually send it to you and you can have a look at it. I'll send it to you on email after. But basically, it's just a guideline of what to eat, how to eat, how to work out your calories, but nothing too overcomplicated. You know, no rocket science. You know, it's just healthy, good quality food. But I always say, if you fancy a Mars bar, you should look at it and stare at the Mars bar and think, do I actually want that Mars bar? Do I need it? And if you do, then have it and enjoy it. But if you think about it, 
you, most of the time people think, I actually don't want that. You're just eating it because you're bored, you're fed up, you're depressed, you're stressed. Something's gone on in your life that's negative. Just like that, it knocks your barrier in your mind and you just eat a Mars bar and you shouldn't have eaten it, for example, when you're on, you were doing really well. But something negative happens in your day and it ruins everything. So it's really important to try and stay focused and actually think, do I need to eat that, that bad food? That's really good advice. I'd never thought to yeah to, to kind of focus on. It. Do I really want to? I've been um, calorie logging, and I know that kind of there's mixed feelings on that. We had um, uh, the professor on who's written spoon fed, and he said he's he's against it because he said, "How do you know that the calories are accurate on the packing and what have you?" But exactly, um, it's one, of the, things, it's one of the things. One of the things it's done for me is it's made me appreciate what you you know. So for example, I'd go shopping and I'd maybe have a couple of cookies just in the car on the way back from the weekly shop. And I was doing yeah. 335 calories per cookie, but I wasn't really thinking about it. And I wasn't really going, oh, that was an amazing cookie. It was just something I was doing habitually whilst driving. Mate, we all do it. And even personal trainers do, you know, and if they <laughs> but I, you know, I play Call of Duty with my mates and, I, you know, my wife will bring some biscuits down while I'm waiting in the bushes for an enemy, just like that, the whole box is gone. So <laughs> we can do it. We can all do it. Um, but for me, in terms of dieting, and calorie count, yeah, there's so many trainers that, you know, it's agree to disagree in this world. It's all about what works for the individual. You know, I've got clients that train me that do Slimming World. People are well against Slimming World, but I think if it works for you and you're going to lose weight, then good for you. Do you know what I mean? I think yes. healthy and natural, good for you. Like, that's what you should do. Um, I always say in terms of measuring your foods, do it with your hands. So you look at the palm of your hand and you measure your food. So a handful of pasta, a handful of veg you know, a breast of chicken. And that's how you measure your plate because we quite easily scoop on more and more and more. And before you realize you're like, actually, I've got loads of food in. I don't actually need all this food. So I say measure with your hand. That's how you get a good quality meal. We've got about a minute to the news. Um, you're so passionate about this and you can hear it in your voice. Is it your ambition? Would you like to become the Jamie Oliver of personal training? Do you know what I mean by that? I mean, regular TV shows with maybe some campaigning elements to them. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing, keep pushing on, keep doing other TV shows when they come along. And uh, I'll probably do this for the rest of my life, to be honest. It's all I know is fitness and helping people. And it helps my mental health. And I know I've helped someone else. It keeps me on track. Well, I think it's a brilliant story you've told us tonight. And um, it was inspirational watching you in that show, which is why I wanted you on the programme. And I knew that you'd be able to bring some of that to the airwaves as well. So congratulations on what you've achieved so far, Raymond. Thanks for making time to speak to us. And good luck with future projects and stay in touch with us. Thank you very much, Phil. Uh, that's Raymond Muson. If you want to find out more about what Ray does, the company's called Ram Fitness UK. It's at Ram Fitness UK on Twitter. He's prolific on Instagram as well, he's Raymond, and you'll be able to find out some more details of him there. And um, the Channel 5 show that I saw, it's your full time fat. Series 2, episode 8, if you want to see Ray in that, that would be available on the catch-up service from Channel 5. After the news, busy, 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 as we get you further reaction to what President Biden announced that we brought you live in the White House.